Welcome back. Today you can see we're taking a cut here with an inserted cutter and we're using MQL. We're using the Fog Buster, which is MQL stands for Minimum Quantity Lubrication. There are really three really common types of coolant systems on CNC mills like this. Genuinely, you have something like MQL, like the Fog Buster here, full flood coolant, and or just plain dry air blast, which is very common for indexable cutters cutting steel. I probably don't want to fail to mention that there's also through spindle coolant, which is very common on high-end industrial machines, but it's not super common on lower-end hobby or entry-level mills, but you can see that uh, Sile is working on that, and this is in development right now. As you guys can see here, the stock coolant pump makes plenty of pressure. In fact, I would argue that this is almost high-pressure flood coolant, even with the three lock lines on the fourth. And then the air blast here just makes a tremendous amount of pressure, but it can it can uh, tax your compressor a little bit. Here on the X7, all you got to do is break this little lock nut loose, and you can back this off to create more air pressure and then lock it back down. Or if you want to reduce the air pressure so that it's a little bit easier on your compressor, you back that lock nut off, spin this little needle valve or this valve in, and then lock it back down. Here we've got the fog buster in the box. This is how I received it from Hench Manufacturing. I've had a few of these, and uh, I'm actually gonna buy another one for one of the other mills that's in the shop. I actually did a voiceover while I was actually unboxing this, but unfortunately I didn't realize that one of the guys in the shop had the radio going, and so it would have been flagged by YouTube. So you can see there's a little bit of packaging. This is actually the Fogbuster Mini, and you can see it's already got the regulator installed. This is the... Uh, line with the fog buster unit itself this is the single air feed line and then there are a few different accessories this is a magnetic base with a uh, with like a little shutoff valve they also sent a few additional things these little brass nozzles that can actually be bent to fit so i'll show you guys that here in just a little bit but that's the majority of it once we get this thing completely out of the box i'm going to explain a little bit more while i'm back at the shop now that we got everything out of the box, let's take a quick look. So this is the Mini. So you can see this thing is like about the size of a coffee mug. It's not, it's not too large. The whole idea here was that we wanted to be able to move this thing around from machine to machine. As I think about it, we'll probably just get another one dedicated for the machines. But this is a switch for the air supply. This is a magnetic stand so that you can do like a static line if you want to actually uh, put this thing like on the table. Not everybody runs these things on the head of the machine. Here's the actual coolant sprayer itself and I hear people call these misting systems, but they're not technically misting systems. They're mist list. They're fog list systems. You see this one. Here's the actual fog buster itself. And it's got a little check valve in line right here so that it doesn't drip. One of the biggest complaints you hear from guys that are running, you know, systems like this is that they don't like the fact that it drips. They only want to prov provide a, a very small amount of coolant, which is mod, you know, modulated or governed with this little needle valve. But this check valve makes sure that it doesn't drip, so that's pretty trick. And then we've got some uh, additional airline here with some fittings. So, oh yeah, one other thing. I didn't realize this, but the nozzles that actually go inside the, the body of the actual fog buster coolant sprayer right here these are threaded so these actually thread in there so it's not uncommon for guys to bend these up to fit a specific application so i thought we would i got a couple extra ones so i thought we'd bend them up and just show when you you know maybe you're bending something around a fixture or around something that is required so i just got a couple extra ones so we could do that and mess around so we just got to get this thing plumbed in and connected to the machine Start doing some fog busting. Plumbing the fog buster is super easy. You can see I put it on this little solenoid with uh, a little remote that I got from Harbor Freight. You just pull it down and you adjust this. This runs, these really run between 10 and 15 PSI and you just snap it up to lock it in. And then if you want to shut it off, you can just use the same exact thing. I want, when I first set this up, I ran this over on the side of the machine, but you can run it in a static position too. It's not uncommon. Fogbuster sells a little, uh, a little standoff that allows you to run it in, in a single position. So static positions are common. Positions like this here, where it's running down in a groove very close to the cutter are very common. Uh, this is a static line. And a lot of times when you have 
flood coolant on one side of your part uh, and it won't evacuate chips on say the left side, something like this fog buster running with just air is really, really useful because the flood coolant does a good job of cooling the cut, but it doesn't do a great job of washing away the chips. And so this little magnetic stand that Hench Manufacturing sells comes in really useful. I've actually used it a few different times on a few different projects. You can see here we've got the fog buster installed and these are just some aluminum shock shaft players that I'm using. They don't have any serrated teeth or anything, but I broke through, I broke loose the, the uh, nozzle that's on here because I have a few spares that were sent with this setup and I, I threaded this one out because I'm just gonna leave this one as my straight one. I threaded this new one in and after I threaded it in, you'll see here in just a second that I snug it down real quick with the pliers just so that it doesn't go anywhere so it doesn't rattle loose or vibrate loose while we're actually running the fog buster and taking in a cut. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna use a green Sharpie. We're just gonna mark the bottom edge of this so that when we put a bend in it, we know uh, exactly where that bend is gonna be after it's threaded back in. So I'm just marking it with a Sharpie. It's behind my hand. It was a little tricky because I had to lean in here in front of the camera. Next, we're gonna take this back out the same way we put it in. And you'll see that we now have an indexed location so that we can bend this thing in the correct orientation. So once this camera focuses, ah, there we go. You see we have a nice green line along the bottom edge. and. This is just one application where you might want to bend something to say shoot air directly down a cutter or maybe around a corner or there's some special application. It's probably not something you do very often, but this is just a 10 or a, I don't know, I think I bought this set of tubing benders, I don't know, like 12 or 14 bucks off of eBay. You just take your, you just line up the, the nozzle, which you can see fits right into that center groove. I line it up in there. I index it so that that green mark is down and then I just put a little bend in it. It doesn't take very much force at all. I'm kind of fiddling with it here a little bit. Nice smooth bend. We'll leave it about like that. Now we'll take it back to the machine and thread it in. I was struggling to get this scene lit as like as I, I was struggling to get this scene lit as much as I would have liked so that the camera didn't struggle. You can see that the machine is so bright inside that it was really hard to get it focused. But there you have it. Now, if you have a situation where you need to really fire down at the cutter for any reason, you can do that. Like I said, it's not super common, but it's nice that Hench Manufacturing made this feature modular so that these things can be done if they need to without destroying the fog buster itself. Hey, hey guys, Jay here. I'm back with a video for you guys today. I'm gonna to try to keep this short and sweet. As you can see, I've got a port cool going. It's literally like 105 degrees outside and it's in the high 90s in the shop. But I wanted to make a video specifically about coolant sprayers. I've got, I've got this fog buster that I got from Hench Manufacturing. It's the second one I've owned and I'm getting ready to order a couple more. There are really three fundamental types of coolant. Now this is just gonna be, this is a crash course in coolant literally. There's three fundamental types of coolant. Straight air blast is at one end of the spectrum. Just straight up full high pressure flood coolant would be at the other end of the spectrum. And then somewhere in the middle is something called uh, like a coolant sprayer. Now there are really two types of coolant sprayers. You have something like this that you can get on eBay for 20 or 30 bucks. And this thing uses burn and lose principle, just like your high school physics, just like you remember from high school physics. This just goes down into a bucket of liquid. You have a pressure an airline that goes in here and it sucks up fluid and it creates mist. This is highly atomized fluid of your choice, whatever it is you've chosen to use. Then you have something like a fog buster. This is a mistless coolant sprayer. The fundamental difference between something like this that is dirt cheap and easy to use at 30 bucks is that this doesn't pressurize the liquid. What makes the Fog Buster so unique is that it runs at a very low pressure, 15, you know, 10 to 15, 20 PSI, very low, and it pressurizes the fluid that's in the canister. So that's why they call it the mistless coolant sprayer. Now I'm not here to give you guys a, I'm not here to perform a commercial for the Fog Buster. I'm a huge fan of it. 
I've, this is the second one that I've got now, and this one was sent to me by Hench Manufacturing. I'm gonna buy two more for each of these machines. I see a lot of guys that put these in their machine because they don't wanna fork over the coin for the Fogbuster. Like, I totally get it. Money can be tight. We've ever, I don't know anybody who hasn't been tight on money at some point or another. I would rather see you take your time and build your own version of a fog buster than put this on your machine. There are a few cases where something like this is probably a pretty good choice. If you're in a wide open environment, it's gonna be used extremely sparingly and you have tons of airflow, great. If you have a machine that actually has a mist collector on the machine, which is like a, a very powerful like, suction system with filtration, then something like this works great. If you're gonna be working in your garage or in close quarters, and you're going to be using a coolant sprayer, I would urge you to use something designed more like a fog buster and less like a traditional misting coolant sprayer. So that's it. That's the video. I thought I would just share my opinion with you guys real quick. I'm su My company, we used to make carbon fiber products and I used to make the guys that cut the carbon fiber. There's only me and one other guy. I made them wear these crazy respirators. Like, like I was just, there's nothing worth trading your health for. And I think that's super important. And it's easy in the moment to cut corners for just a second and then another second and then another second. And next thing you know, you got a full bad habit going that doesn't, it's not dangerous in the moment but the, uh, the effects, the long-term you know, effects that compound as they add over time just become super detrimental to your health. So hope you guys enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed making it. Get out there, make some chips, use flood coolant, use air blast, use a mistless coolant sprayer if you can, or if you're gonna use one of these, if you're gonna use one of these cheapies, please use it in a well-ventilated area with some type of an extraction system. All right, so this is the hose that we just connected. We thought it would be funny just to see what kind of coolant pressure came. We weren't sure if we should use the pump that was in the machine or if we should use a secondary pump like we have on other machines. <laughs> I think this pump will be fine. 